great moments are born of great opportunity. It's the Tom Likas Show. And that's what you have here tonight, boys. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. Last weekend, did you see the big fight? Big fight. How big was it? It had the largest attendance for any event ever at Staples Center. That includes Lakers, NBA Finals, Neil Diamond Concerts, Grammy Awards. This fight had a bigger crowd than any event in the 10 years of Staples Center. Outrageous, right? It was Sugar Shane Mosley, who was a guest on our show a couple of months ago. He was here against former welterweight champion Antonio Margarito. Now, that fight was on HBO. I, I watched it on HBO. I did not see it at Staples, but I did uh, watch the fight. And uh, Shane Mosley, just at 37 years old, and with the Balco allegations and all that stuff, I mean, Shane Mosley made quick work of this guy. I mean, just brutalized him. Brutalized! I love boxing. And he brutalized Margarito. Now, listen to this story. For those of you who are boxing fans or those of you who are casual fans who might tune into a fight like this once in a while, Margarito was very popular. Are you kidding me? One of these fighters, they would always show video of him, you know, just, just punching, punching, punching. And, uh, you know, as Gary said, look, you know, looked like he had like stone fists. You know, just knock you right over. Well, maybe he did have stone fists. Says here, former welterweight title holder Antonio Margarito had his license suspended Wednesday by the California State Athletic Commission. While it investigates a plaster-like substance found under the boxer's hand wraps before his loss last weekend to Shane Mosley. Did you hear about this? The commission also suspended the license of Margarito's trainer, Javier Capatillo, and asked both to appear at a hearing on February 10th. The substance was bagged as evidence before the bout Saturday at Staples Center, that was last weekend, and was being analyzed by the California Department of Justice, the commission said. The panel was investigating whether any rules were violated. Commission Chairman Tim Noonan said the inquiry stems from a commission rule that limits the amount and type of gauze and tape allowed under a fighter's glove. He said the commission has authority to discipline athletes when their actions are, quote, discredit to boxing. Reprimands could include fines, suspensions, or revocation of licenses. The commission did not say how long the investigation would last. Bill Kaplan, a spokesman for Margarito's promoter, said the boxer has obtained a lawyer and plans to attend the hearing. He expects to prove himself innocent, Kaplan told the Associated Press. Kaplan said he did not have any information on what substance was found on the hand wraps or what evidence the boxer planned to present. He referred further comment to the boxer's promoter, Bob Arum, who did not immediately return a message left at his office Wednesday night. Margarito, of Tijuana, Mexico, very popular, lost his WBA welterweight title to Mosley in nine rounds and dropped to 37-6 and six with 27 knockouts. With those fists of stone. <laughs> the 30-year-old didn't win a single round on one judge's scorecard. He only won one on another and two on the third before the ninth round. He had his hands rewrapped before the fight after a complaint by Mosley's trainer. Margarita was coming off an impressive victory over previously unbeaten Miguel Cotto six months ago. Now, what do you think about this? Now, obviously, we're going to find out what's true and what's not. But uh, here's a guy, you know, some of you have been paying good money to see him fight. And now there's an allegation that one of the reasons he's so good at punching is because he allegedly fills his gloves with plaster of Paris. 
which sets very quickly and turns into a very, very stony, rocky-feeling substance. And uh, then uh, some guys are uh, allegedly getting knocked on the jaw by uh, a fistful of plaster of Paris. Do you feel ripped off? Do you have a problem with this kind of behavior? The allegations. How do they make you feel about boxing? I love boxing. The boxing is always skated near the shady end of the pond. You know what I'm saying? It's... Uh, it's uh, just one of those uh, sports that has been uh, filled not only with controversy, but with downright fraud and corruption, depending on which particular boxing matches we're talking about. And over the years, I've been suspicious of many bouts I've seen. Having said that, I love boxing. I love watching it. I love when it's clean. I love when the rules are followed. But when you look at how Margarito, the champion, got brutalized by a 37-year-old who I'm imagining is off the steroids at this point because <laughs> people are checking, I would imagine. I mean, when you see the way he got brutalized by Shane Mosley, is it possible this guy was never as good as you thought he was? Is it possible he was never the big stud you thought he was? Do you feel ripped off? Are you concerned about how this will turn out? Whether the boxer Antonio Margarito will lose his license for allegedly sticking plaster of Paris inside his boxing gloves? I want to get your reaction to this. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Now we've got shorter commercial breaks, fewer commercials. Oh, oh, oh. we take more calls faster. And look at the variety of topics we've got these days. It's out of control. And it's all just for you. Yeah, well, you and a few other people. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. All right, we're talking about... Uh, Antonio Margarito, the welterweight fighter, former champion, who has had his license suspended by the California State Athletic Commission. Why? Well, they're investigating a plaster-like substance found under the boxer's hand wraps. Was it like plaster of Paris? What was that? What do you think about this? Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nick. Yeah, I went to that... Uh... Margarito Mosley fight, and I went with my old man. We both got uh, two three hundred dollar seats. And, you know, we were right up there, and I thought it was going to be a good fight at first for like the first two rounds, up until I saw pretty much Mosley like dominating Margarito and realizing that it was just going to be, you know, he brutalized him. He didn't just dominate; he brutalized yeah. the guy. Yeah, he killed him, and I feel completely ripped off. And you know, and I followed you know uh, Margarito since he fought Cotto, and I thought that he was just going to you know like go through Mosley like Cotto did through Mosley, but I guess wrong, and I definitely think he should get his license taken away. I think it's BS. Yeah, and you wonder what will happen, you know. Uh, if it turns out to be true, what's the punishment? Does he uh, get to lose his license forever? Uh, does he uh, get suspended for, uh, you know, a, a month or six months? Uh, is it just California, and then so down the line, now all his fights will be in Las Vegas? I mean, <laughs> what ends up yeah. happening anyway? Everybody who's ever lost his license to fight ends up going and fighting some other state. Yeah, I know. I think the people uh, want to see what he could do without having uh, anything to pack his fist a little bit. I think we'll probably see him in, like, not too long, maybe six months, I'm just guessing. Well, we'll find out. Lonnie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Lonnie. How are you? Oh, man, just getting off, just getting off. Hey, at first I want to say, uh, first time, long time. Cool. Yes, sir. Hey, but, uh, no, man, I, I totally, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at a total misunderstanding as to how this could even take place, you know, in, in the, in the boxing world, you know what I'm saying? It's with, 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 as far as we've come, you know, with all the rules and regulations and the testings and all that kind of stuff, how do you let something like this slip, slip by, you know? And like I said, with, with, or like the last caller was saying, with Toto. You know, I'm, I'm thinking it was going to be an easy fight for him, too. And then, you know, that comes out in this night. Now he's, he's suspect, you know? 
that's the thing that's amazing to me here is that, uh, you know, he had such a reputation for being such a hard puncher. And this was going to be, uh, in fact, what was he, a four to one favorite in the fight over Mosley? Right, right. right. And now, so, and, and it wasn't even close. That This fight wasn't even close. <laughs> man, you know, it was ridiculous, man. We watched it and I, I, I was, I, I really couldn't believe what I saw. And then afterwards, I didn't get to see the introduction, but I guess it happened before the fight. And so afterwards, then I get to the the, uh, the recap on the fight or whatnot, and that's when they're explaining about the, the plastic substance that they found in the glove beforehand. And right. I'm like, are you serious? I know. But yeah, yeah, man. Outrageous stuff. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Carlos on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great. Well, you know what? I actually used to work at the same center. I was at that fight. And you know what? I completely agree with you. You know what? He, Margarito came into that fight, and he was like the 4-1 to favorite in Vegas. So if you would have put down your money on on, Mar- on Mosley that night, you would have won. But you know what? It's wrong. Now you have to look back and think, what did this guy really do what he did against Cotto? Because if you remember the Cotto fight, Cotto was dominating him. But Cotto ran out of steam. And then that's when once his name took over. You know, Margarito. Margarito took over the fight, but then, you know, then Mar- then uh, Cotto had to give up. You know, he gave up. the f- he, he, he took two knees in the 11th round, and the referee had to stop it. So then you have to think to yourself, okay, you know, at that time, you're like, oh, damn, Margarito is the best next thing coming. You know, then after the De La Hoya fight, you're like, oh, now we can see Margarito against Pacquiao. When you can see Margarito get knocked out the way he got knocked, beat down by Mosley, and then you hear about these allegations, of course he gets this. He deserves to get his life. By the way, well, again, and, and Shane Mosley's a fan of the show, and he's a great guy, and he's been on. 37 years old. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. 37, I mean, and this guy proved it. I mean, everybody in boxing is going to have their day when they finally can't do it anymore. 37 years old and brutalized the guy who was the 4-1 to favorite. Maybe the guy was never that good. I don't know, but now we could, now, now we know, you know, maybe this guy really wasn't good. Maybe the only good thing he had going was a strong chin. Other than that, he wasn't a, he didn't have that killer instinct, except for the killer instinct in his gloves, which is I'll gone now. Tell you what, that chin didn't look too strong last Saturday. Uh, Robert on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great. You know what, I think it's a shame. Um, I followed boxing for years now, and, and Margarito was one of the, you know, Mexican, it made us Mexicans proud and everything, but since he did that, you know, it takes a lot away from him. I mean, we see a lot of shady fights with De La Hoya, and now all of a sudden with this guy again, you know, it's, it's kind of a shame, you know, because he has the talent, but, you know, he just screwed up his whole career. Well, again, you know, they'll they'll have an investigation, and they'll determine whether or not it actually happened. Uh, that is certainly what the trainer for Shane Mosley said had happened. And uh, now he's been suspended pending this investigation and the hearing. Uh, so um, we'll see if that's what happened. But, you know, this, following just a few weeks, the, uh, the De La Hoya fight where he just threw in the towel against yep. Pacquiao, I mean, what does that say? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and like like I said, this guy just, you know, I mean, he has all the talent in the world. I don't know why he did that. You know, I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. Makes no sense to me. If it's true, it makes no sense at all. Mitch on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? It's going okay. Um, you know, I'm not really a big fan of boxing, but doesn't, uh, when the fighters get wrapped up and everything else, doesn't have someone have to sign off on the gloves and inspect it before they even go and fight? You know, that's a very good question, and I thought they did do that, but, uh, uh, if they did, uh, how did, you know, why did it take Shane Mosley's trainer to see this? Were there other yeah. people there, uh, observing? I, you know, what's going on? Yeah, that's what I would like to know. Who else is in on this that, you know, too many other people that didn't know about it, now all of a sudden, too little, too late. No doubt about it, Mitch. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Gabriel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going? Going great. All right, Tom. Uh, well, my thought on this is that um, Margarito, no doubt about it, has a world-class chin. As we know, he's never been knocked out before until this fight. But I think that his skill set is not such a, a one like, a, like for perhaps a um, De La Hoya, for example. But his his major uh, league chin has always kept him in the fight until the later rounds, which allowed him, to, you know, dominate later in the fights because he's always been a physically imposing fighter for his weight class. So therefore, when he fought, you know, Goto, he um, 
he dominated later in the because his chin allowed him to stay in the in the in the fight um, because he was getting his butt whooped. He was getting his butt handed to him in the Cotto fight. Um, and the other point I'd like to make is when Shane Mosley fought um, Cotto, um, Shane Mosley, in my opinion, either won that fight or it was a draw. And he only lost that fight by one point by one judge. And so he's by by far over the hill. He still, you know, got it in him. Well, again, though, you have to wonder, uh, you know, maybe Margarito was never as good as you thought he was. Well, you know, I don't think his skill set is such that one of like a Cotto, a De La Hoya, a Mosley. He doesn't have those types of skills. He go, he's in it for the long haul. He I mean, keep, to... keep in mind that Shane Mosley, according to what I read, had testified uh, privately that uh, he knew what Balco was and that he had used their services. Okay, I mean, the guy apparently uh, admitted at one point in time to having used something that was like a steroid. Uh, right. So, I mean, he, so you got to think he's not doing that now because everyone's going to be checking. Well, uh, but by the same token, how did he make such short work of a guy who was a four to one favorite? Maybe your four to one favorite was never that good. Absolutely, I think the four to one was just it, it was, that. No four to one was never like you said, not not that good. But um, he made short work because he's no slouch in his own right. Number one, and he had an excellent game plan. Yeah, if you noticed in the fight, whenever Cotto would get in and try to bang, I mean, I'm sorry, Margarito would get in and try to bang with him, he'd hold, he'd hold him. Yeah. And, you know, so he had a great game plan. He's no slouch. He's a hell of a fighter, and he's another And, and let's never fight. forget, he beat Oscar twice. Beat him twice, outright. Well, the second time, that was, you know, you know that that's up for debate. But, you know, he did beat him twice on, in, in history, though, as far as history. Absolutely. Not many did that. That's right. I mean, you know, he's he's just an awesome fighter. He's got a great personality to go with it. You know, he's a humble guy. And you know his About favorite talk radio program. He listens to this show. You know that. Oh, I, I'm sure he does. Yeah, if he's a <laughs> smart man, he does. And the other thing, one last comment, Tom, is that um, he happens to know my mother, Lily Rodriguez Weston Peace, who was a world champion kickboxer in her own right. Um, and much props to um, Mosley for this fight. Thank you for that, Gabriel. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello to Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi. I was saying that uh, all, the, all the people that he's beat, if they found out that this is true, what happens to those people's records now that they have a defeat on their record? I don't think anything happens because really the only thing we're talking about is this fight and what was allegedly found before this bout. Do you think they'll try to figure out how many times this this has been done in the past? I don't this, I don't know that you could make a case to do that. Uh, you know uh, what I would say is why wasn't uh, why weren't the trainers of the other fighters in there uh, checking the checking the gloves? Yeah, well, there there should be. There's one guy that checks everybody's gloves, even in MMA and every, every kind of league, and it's it's not right that. They didn't find it out before. If it well, happen. Or maybe it never happened before. Uh, I guess they'll try to investigate and find out. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Benji on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Benji. Hi, listen, Tom. I'm a writer for a big-time boxing website, the biggest one in the world. I'm not going to mention which one it is. Um, it is despicable what Margarito did, no doubt. However, the fact that... You know, some of your callers are questioning his legitimacy as a good or great fighter is ridiculous. The guy's got some of the biggest names on his record. He's got Cotto. He's got Cintron. And it wasn't just because he was taking him to the dome the whole time. The guy causes problems for anybody because he's a massive, massive welterweight. Well, uh, then, then explain the fight last Saturday. Well, okay. You know, obviously... You know, he got caught with something, and that clearly played on his mind because that was not the Antonio Margarito that comes in. Well, could it could it possibly be that it's the first time he's been in the ring without plaster of Paris in a while? That, that is, you know what, Tom? I cannot argue with you on that one. And if that were the case, is it possible he was never as good as you thought he was? No, absolutely not, because... That's his, not possible. No, because... No, uh, because he... He's never been a big puncher. He's a second-half fighter. His whole thing is based on volume. Um, you know, he throws 130 punches around. I mean, they took they, they take those things out, and suddenly, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know what the history is. He's fought some of the uh, huge fights with big-time trainers. I mean, Ker he's fought Kermit Cintron twice. Emmanuel Stewart is in Kermit Cintron's corner. Why didn't Emmanuel see it? 
But again, I'm, I, look, you're right about that. Why didn't he see it? But by the same token, it is still possible that if it happened this time, it's happened other times. It's like baseball players who play with cork bats. You know, it's, it's only natural to say how long has that cork been in there. Hey, and how about this? If we're going to question people's legitimacy, I mean, Mosley got caught with EPO. He's in the Victor Conte case. And... I know that you're a bo- boxing fan, Tom, and you probably saw Mosley's last fight against Mayorga. Did he not look twice the size this time fighting Margarito? Where was Margarito's size advantage? Nowhere. He walked in with forearms bigger than Evander Holyfield. Well, and then again, uh, you know, where where's the testing? Where's the... Uh, uh, I don't, I don't right. get it. And, and that, is, that is what has always bothered me about boxing. You know, I know you like boxing, and you're a, a, a writer, and I like boxing. My dad I was a Golden Gloves boxer in New York City uh, before I was born, and uh, so it's been uh, around me all my life. But I must say that, uh, you know, boxing's always been on the edge of corruption and controversy and, and frankly, I think, illegal behavior. I'm, I'm very suspicious of some of the things I see, and uh, this doesn't make me feel any better about Tom it. Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. You hear us now six days a week in Southern California. Two to six p.m. every Saturday. It's two to six p.m. Pacific time every Saturday. And Monday through Friday from three to eight p.m. as you head home on 97.1 FM Talk. But if you can't get us on the radio, you'll find us at our website, blowmeuptom.com. The license of former welterweight boxer Antonio Margarino has been suspended by the California State Athletic Commission. They're investigating a plaster-like substance found under the boxer's hand wraps before he lost last weekend to uh, Sugar Shane Mosley at Staples Center. And uh, there we go, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Jesus on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing okay. Hey, you know, it's more of a statement to say what I'm, what I'm about to say. I'm going to have to do my Jimmy the Greek invitation, uh, Im- uh, imitate, oh, uh, from, okay. In the history of boxing, I mean, I've been watching it since the 70s, and I watch tapes of old great Latin fighters. But I hate to say it, but let's go back to a, a, go as far back as 70s as Lex Laguayo. But unfortunately, all the top Latin fighters have always been stopped by African Americans. They have halted their supposable awesome careers. From Julio Cesar Chavez by Frankie Randall, and Melzer Taylor beat him. Oscar got knocked down by Hopkins. Alexis Aguayo by Aaron Pryor. It's just the style of fighting. And I mean, but Margarito. He may have a couple of good names to who he's beaten, but it's just the honest truth. And I tell everybody, I go, it's a Latin hype of just kind of feel superior that we're fighters. But when we start going to the higher weight rounds, like welterweight, lightweight, eventually every great Latin fighter has been stopped by an African American. It's just in the books. What we cannot. Be now, now tell us why you think that is. I think it's just a style of fighting. The, I mean, Sugar Shane at 37. Has power. It's just the style. I mean, it's my Jimmy. I'm sorry, it sounds horrible, but I tell the guys, and, and most of the guys I work with or us fans, they go, I mean, "No, you're right." It's just I go. Our style of fighting is try to out hit me because I'm going to hit you back. And at the end, it's just the style of boxing that you know. Uh, Pernell Whitaker to me beat Julio Cesar Chavez years ago, but corruption was in our favor with Don King, and so was Meldrick Taylor. But the truth is, it's just hype. It's just. I don't, it's just the, the Mexican fighters or Latin ones are like, they go in, there's no style, there's nothing pretty about their style. They go in there to have their jaw, you test their jaw, and if you can eventually hit it, like uh, Margarito did, he got clocked. He, he, that's all that happened. That You know what? You it's, it's just gone over for years, and I tell everybody, that's the only sad part. I go, we have all this excitement until a good African-American fighter has every great Latin fighter in the last 25, 30 years. That's uh, pretty hardcore. I have looked at the records. I wonder 
It would be look politi- at it. it would probably be politically incorrect even to keep a record like that. But it's just it's just the truth. I hate to say it, but it's uh it, it just goes down that way. It's just the, the style of fighting. Even Oscar, I mean, uh, he lost to Hopkins. He just got too much power. And our, our jaws can only just take so much. <laughs> I mean, how many shots can we take? And then we have no defense. We go in there and Julio be, be how many taxi cab drivers did Julio beat to get his victories that he got? <laughs> I mean, how many? How about Barbara? Bar, Barbara, I mean, he had some losses too. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's a lot of hype in Latin America that, you know, we want to feel that we're, we're better than what we are. But the truth is, when we fight each other, it's a great, you know, like when, uh, when uh, Barrera fought against uh, uh, Lopez, I mean, it was great. I mean, those were good fights there, but, you know, every single time it's just sad to see that Barbara, we just had a lot of hype behind him. He was a great hope, and Sugar Shane at 37, just our defense of hit me in the face and I will handle it. It didn't last too long. Thank you, Jesus, for the call. Wow, that's hardcore. one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Sammy on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Tom, Tom, I just got to say, I read this in the paper yesterday morning. I was totally disgusted. The thing is, like, I'm a big boxing fan, and one of the reasons I appreciate it so much is because I've boxed before, and I understand how much it hurts to get hit just by the glove alone. Now, you add some plaster of Paris into those tightly packed fists, and it's going to feel like a brick. I thought, well, that, exactly. And, uh, you know, plaster of Paris in the glove, isn't that like, a, in my memory, that's like a, a joke from a Warner Brothers cartoon, you know, somebody uh, from getting something about plaster of Paris from the Acme company and sticking it inside the glove. I, I didn't know anyone actually would try that. I, that's why I was so disgusted. And the thing is, is that, you know, I because I'm busy doing, you know, what I need to do in life, uh, I didn't see the Cotto fight till like a week ago. I watched it on YouTube. And if you watch those later rounds before he finally threw in the towel, Margarito didn't seem to be barely touching him, but, but Cotto felt very fearful of his punches. And instinctively, I knew something was wrong, and I, I just couldn't figure it out. So this is kind of going hand-in-hand in, hand in what we're talking about. And I think if, if he is caught, with, if that's what it is, there should be some seri- serious criminal prosecution because when you're in that ring with those gloves on, I mean, there's nowhere to go. You can't escape, and you're trapped with these bricks coming at you. So I just wanted to say that, and I'm, I'm just disgusted. I'm really glad you're talking about it, and can you take me out and shot my lifestyle? Yeah, yes, Freddie Wilhite style. Here you go, Sammy. I shot my wife in the stomach for 38. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. She's alive? Yeah. I think she's dead. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Jeff on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it going, buddy? It's going great. Okay, so just a few quick things. This is the first time that's happened uh, back in 1983 on the undercard of the Roberto duran Davy Moore fight. There was a trainer who trained Roberto Duran uh, named Panama Lewis, and he was caught taking some of the stu- uh, padding out of his fighter's gloves and putting plaster of Paris. They found out after the fight because um, Panama Lewis's fighter walked over to congratulate the other corner, you know, to, you know, a good fight, and they, when he put his hand out, the other guy's trainer realized there was almost no stuffing in his glove. So uh, what ended up is they went to court, and because he altered the gloves, it became an assault, and Panama Lewis was sentenced to four years in prison. Wow. Yep, and the, and the fighter was sentenced to two, and uh, Panama Lewis uh, today still says he didn't do it, but his fighter years ago said that he did and he also admitted to having that done at least three other times wow yep so why does this make you feel about boxing well you know i'm a huge boxing fan obviously if i'm you know really getting back to that stuff but uh boxing you know i love the sport because the pure contest between two men for example it's you know it's fighting its basic element like people talk about you know what's on Sports Center. If there's ever a fight or something has happened, that's always what always appears first. Never mind someone's home run record. Um, if you want to get, you know, nitpicky with people doing drugs, you know, you can look at the NFL. If you test the whole NFL tomorrow, you wouldn't even have one. You know, for steroids, you just kind of pick and choose your battles. I, I'm more irritated when there's bad decisions that, that, that things like this. 
I mean, you know, it's not a shame Mosley's fault. I hope it doesn't rain on his parade because that was a fantastic win. Well, there's no doubt about it. Well, Shane Mosley, uh, uh, you know, as far as we know, uh, fought a clean fight, and uh, wow, might have been one of the best fights I've ever seen with him. Well, Shane Mosley is fast. I think that the other gentleman who spoke a while ago about the difference between Hispanic fighters and African American fighters, I mean, styles do count, and when you oppose each other, as far as those two people, um, you know, it, it, Shane Mosley's a fantastic boxer, and he's got a lot of speed. And he can stand in front of you and miss your punches. And, you know, he's just so much quicker and, you know, speed kills. It's like I throw a bowl at you or shoot you with one, you know, when someone's going to do more damage. Well, you're right about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. What's going on, Father? Not much, son. A pleasure talking to you, bro. Sure. Uh, it, it's simple. You know, uh, the times has changed. There's no more room for boxing. It's too slow. It's too old-fashioned. And uh, that's why MMA is so popular right now, because it's more for young people. The fashion is cool. The, the fighters have a style. And if they don't perform, then you're never going to see the fighting again. So right now, boxing is just, it's too cool. It's too slow. And it, it needs to go. It needs to go. It's a disappointment after another disappointment. David, I thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Irwin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hi. There Nah, they're just talking smack because Margarito is a great fighter. No matter what, he had something in his gloves, whatever. But, I mean, he's the one throwing the punches. The gloves aren't doing anything. He's well, the one well, throwing the punches. How, yeah, well, how, how were those punches last Saturday? Well, I mean, you know what? I think this fight was too close to Christmas. He had all those tamales and the tequila oh, still. Oh, stop. He didn't have time <laughs> yeah, to work it come out. Come on. Come on, Irwin. Please. It's true. Come on. They should have waited a little longer after Christmas because, stop I mean. Stop it. And then yeah, you're kidding, right? Like, huh? You're kidding, right? No. Mexicans love Too the tamales. Close I mean, to Christmas. Like 30. Too many tamales. That's why he lost. Oh, yeah. It was still slow. <laughs> he was still overweight. <laughs> he was not overweight. He had a weigh-in, remember? Well, yeah, but, I mean, he was, he still was tired from getting drunk over Christmas. <laughs> all right, Erwin. That's about all I can handle. My God. Tom. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. We're talking about Antonio Margarito, the boxer who's had his license suspended because the California State Athletic Commission is investigating a plaster-like substance that was found under his hand wraps. That's the stuff that goes inside the glove. Unbelievable. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Going great. Well, I'm calling that because I want to disagree with all of the callers so far, man. Uh, and even you, I think. I guess, uh, first of all, no one's given Mosley any credit, man. I mean, when was the last time you guys see Mosley get tore up by any boxer? You know, oh, I, I, I give him credit. And by the way, he's had a great career. Uh, he's been uh, a lot of fun to watch. Um, uh, again, all I'm saying is that with Margarito, a four to one favorite, it's not just me. A lot of people didn't give him any credit. And, and now maybe we know why he was a four to one favorite. Right. And another thing is, um, as far as the suspension, I think they should have waited until the investigation first. And well, I mean, the, 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 the hearing is only next week. He wasn't going to fight again before next week. Yeah, that, that, that's true. And also, um, you know, when they're wrapping these guys' in hands, there's always, like, say it's a WBO fight or WBC, there's always one of those dudes in there, and there's also a guy from the other team um, in there, you know, watching. So uh, I don't think, I don't think um, as far as Margarito's past fights, you know, there's always someone there watching. watching um, uh, the only thing is that this guy, you know, actually, you know, he, he said something about it, like, hey, man, you know, I, I think I see something fishy going on. But, um... I think if uh, you you see you seen the Cotto fight right with Margarito yeah you do it there I, I believe I heard you say um, Margarito was 
throwing some some haymakers at at Cotto. But again, know? if there was plaster of Paris in the uh, glove, no wonder he was throwing haymakers. Right, and right. and it is only fair to say things like that if you think he might have done it uh, in the Mosley fight. Maybe he did it in every fight. Right, but um, I, I, w I would be suspicious if I would see Margarito landing some crazy haymakers to Mosley, and if he was hitting Mosley with some haymakers and not causing any damage, then I would have been like, damn, what happened to that guy's power? But um. But in the fight, you know, he, he hardly even caught Mosley with any big blows. You know, I, I'd be more suspicious if, like, you know, what happened all that power, you know, if he was hitting them. But Mosley had a good game plan, man. You know, he was tying them up, like the other caller said. You know, that's something different he did, uh, cause Cotto, he was, he was hitting, uh, Margarito with combos, but then he would, he would step away. Yeah, Shane, Shane fought a great fight. There's no doubt about it. And I enjoyed watching it, regardless of what happened before the fight. Here's David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, David. For years. Thank you. Uh, uh, nine years. Let me just throw in my two cents. This is what I think happened. All right? Margarito was he, he was 4-1 to the odds, right, that he was going to win. So I think what happened was Margarito got a little lacy, mostly was out to prove a point. Why? Because everybody was saying he was going to lose. He's an old man. He, uh, he He's going to lose. So what I'm thinking happened is, you know, that's the reason why mostly came out swinging and punching and Margarito slept slept on the fight and wasn't prepared for that. Now, this thing with the plastic came out, and now everybody's questioning his fight. But Margarito's a good fighter. That's no doubt. I've seen his fight. I've seen his fight with Cotto. I think that fight was totally different from the Mosley fight. Well, uh, yeah, that's true. It was. But again, I, uh, you know, I, I just hate to see boxing take still another black eye i yeah you know Definitely. i love it so much i love watching it so much i do too. i mean i'm not i'm not i don't watch all the fights i keep up with you know the, the big ones but like i said that i mean that's I, that's what i think happened i mean it makes sense right tom everybody's putting down mostly he's an old man nobody thought he was gonna win and what ended up happening he said you know what i'm gonna prove a point and then and there you go now now margarito Slept on it, just like everybody else. We know we all bet some money, and we all lost now. You know, does, does that make sense, Tom? I, 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 it does make sense, David, and uh, I thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Now, you know, uh, people call talk shows all the time, and they make claims, and you can't prove any of their claims because they're anonymous, and uh, sometimes they say things that are true, and sometimes they say things that are just lies, or they've got an agenda. You don't know. I don't know. So what we do is we put these callers on the air with a disclaimer, and I tell you, uh, this guy's going to say something now, and he's going to make an allegation, uh, and he's going to make a claim, and uh, who knows if it's true or not. You have to take everything a caller says to a talk show with a grain of salt. That's all I can say. This is Danny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Always a pleasure to talk to you, man. Doing great, Danny. Hey, what I'm about to tell you is 100% truth, 100% truth. Um, I actually work at a hotel where uh, the Mosley camp was staying at for the fight, and I got a chance to, you know, know, know his trainer, know, know the entire camp. They're great guys, you know, pleasure to have um, at the hotel that I work at. And um, I was talking to uh, his ring doctor after the fight, and I was like, hey, man, I can't believe you guys, you know, you guys caught that. I, you know, what made you think? And he and the trainer and the doctor were just like, you know what, man, we're just really cautious about this. And I, I didn't like the way uh, the doctor said he didn't like the way the hands were wrapped, so we had him cut them open. And when they cut it open, they found two strips of plaster that had been wrapped in gauze. They had been wrapped pretty, pretty, pretty uh, tight in gauze just to, you know, conceal it. And he said that he went and he scraped the piece um, of God, and it started to flake. And he said the the, the purpose of the of the plaster was uh, what happens when it gets moist. It, it basically somewhat dissolves and it hardens like 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 a rock. So when he punches, he's basically punching with rock fists. And he showed me these pictures. I mean, I couldn't believe it, but you know that I guess uh, his trainer, who had uh, who had also trained Bernard Hopkins against uh, uh, Tito Trinidad, went through the same thing with Trinidad. They cut open his gloves and they found the same thing. And you know they were just taking precautions. And there you go. That's what they found with Margarito. Wow. Hardcore. And you saw I, pictures of this? I saw pictures. He, he busted out his iPhone. He's like, here, take a look. And he had two pieces of a, of a, of, they were probably like a, maybe three inches by, by an inch thick. And they were on his iPhone in the, in the actual locker room where Margarito was at. Wow. Oh. 
It really, I mean, it was uh, what HBO said was, you know, it really cast a shadow over 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 this specific division, especially with Margarito, who had just killed Miguel Cotto a few uh, a few months back. You know, it makes you think like, did he legitimately beat Miguel Cotto? Yeah, you start to wonder. Of course, HBO is never that suspicious that they stop covering the fights or stop paying for the rights to to air the fights. Yeah, of course. I mean, in fact, you will recall that the last Shane Mosley fight, they did not even bring up the allegations of Balco and steroids. They didn't even talk about it. Yeah, it's all, and now all of a sudden it just comes up. It's just, you know, they're all, they're all in for the money at the end of the day, man. I mean, HBO loves to talk about how they're into sports journalism. But I'll tell you what, when they're in bed with uh, just about anybody, uh, you never know what they're actually going to tell you and what they're not. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's HBO for you. Tom, can you take me on uh, Bill O'Reilly style, man? It's the yeah. best. Danny, I certainly can. Thank you. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! F*** it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. F***ing thing sucks! Alberto on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great. Great. Here's a problem that I have with the situation. I understand that Margarito tried to cheat, but he lost. The same thing with Fernando Vargas. We had to cheat against La Hoya, he lost. And they got what they deserved. But we're talking about Mosley, a guy who admittedly was on steroids when he fought De La Hoya, and he won. And that makes me matter to know that somebody cheated, and he won. Yeah, Margarito and Fernando Vargas, and they tried to cheat, but they lost, and they got what they deserved. But the same way you're going to question Margarito's victories over Cotto, and you got to question Mosley's victories before De La Hoya, after De La Hoya. They only talk about De La Hoya because De La Hoya is a man. But how many who, how many other fights did he have where he was on steroids himself? Uh, it's a legitimate question. I'm just saying, because if we're going to go with this and, and throw it out like that, oh, well, we got to question Margarito's, then we got to question Shane, too, because this is a guy who took steroids against De La Hoya, a guy that he had already beaten. So why would you need to take steroids against a guy that you already beat? All right. We're going to leave it at that. You got the last word, Alberto. Thank you so much. Our email address is my name. You can write to me at tom at blowmeuptom.com. That's tom at blowmeuptom.com. Don't forget, you now hear us on 97.1 FM Talk every Saturday from 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific Time. 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific Time. And if you can't get us on the radio on Saturday... Go to blowmeuptom.com and click on the Listen Live button. Two until six. It's the Tom Likas Show.